All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, inside a different studio, got myself a bit of a space I've built, so plenty of room to get back and analyze the picture, which is fantastic. Pretty excited, I've been out on a trip, just getting tons and tons of footage together for this particular painting. It's a major work, major studio painting. And I went out about two days ago and got some great reference for what I'm about to do. So I'm really fresh in my mind. Uh, I'm gonna run a few videos on the screen so it keeps me fresh while I'm painting. And uh, I've pretty much got the idea of what I want here. Now this is a big Belgian linen and it's clear prime. It's got three coats of clear prime on it, so it's all ready to go. So the paint won't actually soak in. It looks like it's got nothing on it, but there's a clear primer. Tons of oil paint as usual. And these big palette knives, just how I love to work. All right, well, I'm pretty excited about this because uh, I've been out on quite a few uh, plein air trips recently and I feel really charged and ready to go. And I also feel like I know what the colors are gonna be. I've got the concept already in my head before I start. And that's probably really important too. Having the concept of exactly what you want before you even begin. All right, let's just have a look. Before I go any further, sorry, I've just put a few darks in just to compose the picture. Now I'm ready to go. Okay. Okay, so now I reckon I'll get just a few more of these darker tones in. So I'm going for some yellow ochre here, some burnt sienna, a bit of viridian green, just knocking up a dark foliage colour. Okay. So I'll just put the dark tones in first. You can all, it's very easy to go over these dark tones with lighter tones later on. It's easier to work light over dark. You can do the opposite and I probably will later on but it's easier to first get the darks in and then lay the lights on later. I'll just cool that one down a bit so I've got a bit more viridian green and white in that. Lighten that a little bit more. Just want to throw a few cooler tones. Right now with that yellow ochre, back into that mix. It's a bit too cold, so the burnt sienna will warm that up a bit, so I'm just feeling it as I go. A bit of burnt sienna yellow ochre. That's about it, yeah. Get that on. those lines, yes. Right, now some more yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A bit more viridian green in that mix. Just feeling it all the way along, feeling the composition. There's going to be plenty of, plenty of action today, plenty to do, but that's all right. I like painting, so it's all good. All right, so I've got that in. With this raw linen too, I've got it taped off, and I'll peel that tape off later on, so it'll give a bit of a border. But also I'll leave pieces of the clear linen. I like the natural earthy tone of that raw linen, so I'll leave a few of those bits around here and there. I've just left a few bits through there, and they may stay or they may not. We'll see how we go. Okay, well that's all good. Now, I'm going to go for the next biggest difference that I think is the next biggest difference. I want to get some of that sunset sky in. All right. It's going to be a lot of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and white. Plenty of white as well, obviously. Get that white right. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Let's see what I've got here to start with. 
me just lightly place that in, see what I think. Trying not to touch those dark tones yet. All right, now what I might do is just go for more pure burnt sienna and white, so there's not as much yellow ochre in that mix. Let's have a look at that. A bit more burnt sienna, a bit more white. Mix her up, mix her up. Yeah, so I'm going for a little bit more burnt sienna down and closer to the actual glow itself here, closer to the horizon. Just place that on. Lovely stuff. I had some perfect weather while I was out there, absolutely one of those perfect things where you've got still mornings, perfect days, still, you know, no wind, beautiful for reflections, which I'll be doing, which reminds me, I'll just pump a bit of that in now. Yeah, beautiful sort of, a bit more burnt sienna. That perfect sort of weather, just those perfect days where you wish you could spend another two years out there and have the weather just exactly the same as it is while you're there. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Alright, so we've got a bit of that going. Get some more of these yellow ochre tones. A little bit more yellow ochre in the mix, a bit less white. Place that on there. And there. We're going to need plenty more of that yellow ochre, I can see it, so right, let's just make up another brew, shall we? Yellow ochre is just a colour that I really love, it looks like it's part of nature, it just seems to go well with, with realistic paintings, so it just gives that feeling of you can use it in the sky, you can use it in the earth itself, it's just one of those colours that seems to really work well. Earthy tone. Okay, just linen flogging around a little bit. I'll just put my finger there for now. Stop that. Let's have a look at that. What have we got? Okay, yeah. Chunk it up a bit thicker through here. Plenty of it. Okay, now we've done that, we'll go to a new level. What am I going to use? A little bit of phthalo blue, really strong green blue. Mix that with some of that yellow ochre and you get the strongest mixture because it's such a strong blue. You don't need much. So I'm actually putting tons of yellow ochre and white in to try and neutralise it because it's a little bit full on. But it's a beautiful colour. Gives you that beautiful kind of pale green ochre colour that you get in these sort of skies. At this time of day, you get these kind of, if it's a real clear day, if it's going to be a beautiful day, you quite often get this type of 
Yeah, pale green where the ochres on the horizon meet the deeper blues up higher. Beautiful colour, so put it in there. Okay, that's good, we get that there. Now what I'll do is I'll go up a layer. So I'm going to use some more ultramarine blue. Where am I going to stick that? Now we'll stick it here. Ultramarine blue with a little bit of that phthalo green. Some of those oak is mixed up. So we're going higher into the sky now. Let's see what we've got here. A bit more white. Still got some of those ochre colours mixed in with it. Mix them all together. Put them all along, look at that, great stuff. It's all happening. Plenty of paint, throw it on. Great stuff. Great stuff. Bit down here, bit over here, a bit here. All right, let's have a look at that. Okay, that's looking good. Looking. Happy with that, so now I'll go for some white, ultramarine blue, getting higher up into the sky. A bit of magenta, so it's a red blue. Which is a bit of a jump from that green blues we've been using. Let's have a look what we got. Put some in. Got bits in here and there. Get it all on there, look at that. Little bits down here. Alright. Now I'll go up another layer. Bit more blue, bit more white, bit more magenta. Really got to pump into this. I like to paint. I paint a lot of these pictures plain air, as you know. And I like to paint really quickly because that way I feel like your subconscious mind is the, is the thing that controls most of the painting. I feel like if you take too long, you over-intellectualise. And if you do that, it's best to rely on what you've learned over time and just feel the painting and go with that rather than taking too long it's easy to wreck a painting by spending too much time on it as you probably already know a bit more magenta in the mix white so there's plenty of magenta in that I'll just throw a bit of that in because I want a bit of that action down low there Now I've gone over the edge of the tape, but that doesn't matter, that's what the tape's for, because that comes off. Just thrashing all that together, blending it a bit. Alright, now just stand back and see if I've got the see if I have the major colours where I want them. Right, well that's not too bad, so what I'll do is I'll start blending them a bit, pulling all these colours together. Just little marks I need to hold here maybe, like so. 
just speedy little marks to create broken colour and blend. So I slowly pull those tones together, colours and tones, and they merge into each other then. So they don't just stare at each other. But because they're slightly different colours and tones, they dance around in your eyes, which is always a good thing. I'll just get that there. Bit of a workout, I'll tell you what. I tell you what. There we go. Alright. And that. Now it's time to get into this next layer. So, all right, so I'll get a bit of magenta and white, make a really light tone. Just want to knock. I just put a little bit of ultramarine blue with that magenta. Let's have a keep that clean. Hang on, we'll just get ultramarine blue, mix it with that magenta. Just down low on the horizon, I just want to introduce a little bit of it into here. Get that type of purple right down low on the horizon this time of day. Got those colours in, all right. That's really that magenta on the horizon with that little bit of ultramarine blue and white is really sent it off into the distance. Now for the fun part, let's just clean some of that up. The keynote of this painting is gonna be the glowing cliffs. So let's get some colour, some cat orange. A bit of yellow ochre. This is beautiful and strong stuff. Let's just see what we got, right. That, I must say, is a very intense and beautiful colour indeed. So we'll get some of that on. And we'll come down into the reflection, of course. Get some more of that colour. Yellow ochre, cat orange. Okay. Just got to work out where I want it. It's fluorescent. Fluorescent stuff. Beautiful stuff, <laughs> so strong. This is what it's all about. Upward flex like so. Pull through, feeling it as I go. All right, let's stand back and have a look at that. Wow, that is strong. That is strong.
drop little bits in here and there. Okay, now get some more yellow ochre, cat orange, half mix it. Let's work out where I want this. Placing a major tree trunk. Getting the draftsmanship with the knife on edge. Just feeling it at the moment. Feeling some shapes. This one can be here. Right, with some lower key, put a bit of burnt sand to key it down a little bit. I just want a, a weaker version in here. And here. Working out what I want. Alright, so just going to get some CADs colours over here with these yellows, yellow ochres, and some of those greens. I just want to put some light. I've got the shadow tone of the foliage here. I just want to put where the light's hitting it. So it's obviously a morning light, so it's got a lot of brightness to it, like the rest of the morning painting has. Half mixing plenty of chunky colours. It's good, but now I'm going to knock up a bit of Viridian Green and White here, a really pale green, just here. Get some yellow ochres with that. Half mix that with those oranges. Let's just have a look at what we've got. Just lightly, very lightly touching. Some pure greens like so. Pure oranges. Feeling it as we go. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Feel the colours of the morning. Something along those lines. Starting to feel that morning light now. Burying the marks. Feeling that light hitting the different places.
All right, with a clean knife, I just want to pull through a little bit and wipe the knife clean each time. Burying the marks. Just trying to make that sky blend. Got to keep that knife clean. Make the sky blend with the foliage. So I just half pull through. Gonna need Varying the marks. Get that knife hang on cleaner than that. All right, now I'm going to go for some cad yellow, deep, instead of the cad orange, so it's a little bit more of a yellow on the colour wheel. Half mix that with uh, some white, titanium white. Let's just see what we've got here. It's real fresh marks like so. Clean, fresh marks to really bring out the light, the morning light on the edge of the tree trunk. Mix up some cold blues and dump it in here. Just really makes it pop then. Some greens and blues and go for a bit of phthalo blue and that's phthalo is a strong colour, really pops well. Stick some of those in. Feel some of those cool tones in there. Just working with the trunks at a high speed there to feel the energy of them. Sienna. Picking out some draftsmanship. It's going to mix up some of those more CAD colours. Just want to get a few highlights of that more that high intensity yellow on these beautiful orange cliffs. Bring in little bits here and there where you feel it needs it. All right, with a few of these ochres, I'm knocking some of the trees that are on the on the distant cliff face. Just knocking some of those trees there and put their reflection as well, like so. Just randomly placing them. All 
All right, we're going to get the big knife out. She is a ripper, this knife, and uh, going to use that for the uh, reflections across the water. Those beautiful, just the ripples on the water, and then you get this big knife is perfect for it because it allows you to get strong lateral marks like so. Constantly working around, just getting a bit of magentas and blues mixed into here. Just dropping things around, reflections and ripples. Constantly refining, so I'm going to go to a smaller knife now. I've had the big knife out. Now we'll go to this little one. Get some white, cad yellow deep. Start really singing some, uh, the knife on the edge. Start putting in some good draftsmanship, like so, with the edge of the knife. Edge of the knife. It's all about refining now, bringing things in. You started off with plenty of broadness, and now it's about getting smaller and smaller things in now, the more refined things to really start bringing it together. You've got to go for the big impression first, so you go for the major things, the biggest difference between having a blank canvas or blank linen and the subject. Once you've got those big block colours in, next minute refining stuff like so really starts to give the illusion that something's going, actually going on. But you need to put those big chunky colours in first to be able to work it out. All right. All right, so we're getting a few things there now. What I'm going to do is, I might just peel that tape off. We've gotten to the stage now that I feel like it's going to be a lot easier to finish if I take the tape off and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's do that. Quick bin run. All right. Hopefully we don't get in too much of a mess. So far, so good. Peel that one back. Alright, let's have a look at this. Don't want to get in too much strife here. End up wearing it. There we go, here we go. It's all happening, it's all happening. Let's just go put that in the bin and then have a look at what we've got. Okay, so we've got rid of that now. A little bit of tape left here. All right, well, straight away in my eyes, it looks a lot more finished than it was a second ago, so that's fantastic. Uh, I'll stand back and analyse. I reckon I need to put some refining marks in. All right, let's have a look. Those yellows and oranges. Knife on the edge and really start to draw some fine detailing. Pick out the details. 
these little marks really start to pull the picture together. Knife on the edge, clean mark like so, beautiful stuff, that was a good one. Knife on the edge. Keep on going with some of those theories. Alrighty, stand back for a minute. Got a knife on edge here, working some detail in. Do all that detail. Knife on edge, pull through. Knife on edge, creating broken details. Really pulling in the detail now. Got a light ochre tone in here. Light ochre tone here. Just getting those ripples on the surface. Well, we're getting some nice colours there, that's for sure. It's uh, starting to really come along now. Beautiful play of light and shadow and whatever else. Just perfect. Just feeling where I want my energy. Yeah, it's not too bad, it's looking pretty good. I'll tell you what, I reckon I've pretty much got the big impression. So what I might do is get that camera off and we'll have a buzz around and see what you guys think. 
Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and spread it around to all your mates and all the good things in general. And if you haven't as yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and uh, hit that notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of any of these videos as I upload them. All right, let's get that camera off and have a look around. Thank you.